Yo, 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 it's your boy. Okay, now I just sound like that already. You do it, so not gonna do that. <laughs> we are back with the Zig Fridge here, back with some what's on deck. And uh, let's see, let's start off with Kickstarter. Hopefully, this is recording. Um, first of all, we have from Luke Waddy. Wow, he's had 18 projects so far. There's a lot of relaunches, let's just say that. Um, it is the ARW first edition. That's the back design. It's very one way. There's a lot of numbers and letters on there. It's typographic. Not a big fan of that at all. But it's doing pretty well funding wise, and it's still fun. Barring some collapse of some sort. 2000 being printed via the USB C. Um, obviously it's made for cardistry. Uh, I know you see one of the suits, I believe that's the spades. It's a freaking arrow. Just like the back. Oh yeah, and apparently there might be a limited edition as well. Go figure. I'm just not digging it. And there, I don't know what the hell that suit that's supposed to be, I guess. Is that supposed to be the hearts? I don't know. All I'm seeing is a bunch of arrows for the suits. Does not make it usable for anything outside of cardistry. It's not very user friendly. It's not readable. And if you're going to play cards, you want something you can identify immediately. That, you have to guess what it is. Or try to figure it out. It just come up with something. Then there's, I guess that's the club. And then that's the diamond. Yeah, no. Why are the hearts and the spades exactly the same? It's a different color. <laughs> um, and then the court cards, yeah, the standard, which is fine, but that's a lot of red. <laughs> and and then there's typographic stuff on here, like they put Q U and H E for Queen of Hearts, so you would know because otherwise you don't know. But yeah, not really a fan. And there's the Jokers. But it's funded. So yay. And oh yeah, here we go. There's a black version as well, apparently. With printed by NPC, limited edition. 30 pounds for one deck. I wouldn't buy it if it was 3 pounds. <laughs> and look at that back design. Even more one way. Moving on, we got the latest from Ripple Shuffle, the Bicycle Deep Force. Obviously, it's from the same designer as the Surrealism deck, which I still need to review. Ripple Shuffle, Creative Space, my apologies. <laughs> uh, they still have early words at 11 bucks each. Not necessarily a good sign. They should have sold out by now on that. But, um, it's interesting. My early bird will be getting it. Later on, add Murphy's Magic. <laughs> also, I see they're going for a full suit color thing. I can't recall if the surrealism was like that. It's not bad. It's very interesting. Unique. Not necessarily everyone's cup of tea. But I don't mind it. Moving on, we got the Charmers. From uh, Keller O'Neill. Designed by Lotric. And probably produced by him. Nice top cases with full embossing and syrup. Beautiful back design. It comes in green and purple. A lot of criticism because, um, I mean, the 16 bucks seats, that's fine. It's not a terrible price. It's kind of his modified standard court cards to some extent. Standard esque. Uh, nice, you know, back designs. With a logo on there and some writing, or it says Keller O'Neill on the side, I guess. Uh, beautiful Ace of Spades, beautiful tuck case. I like that. I don't like the colors. Um, I also like that the colors are a little bit less standard. They could have just done red, blue. They decided, no, let's do green and purple instead. Um, I like that. Minor criticism is that the early birds were very limited and. Well, it says keep the wonder on one side on the sides, okay. Uh, the early birds were very limited and really for no reason. A lot of creators nowadays 
and some creators will do early birds where it's like, okay, I got X amount single decks, X amount of, you know, doubles, X amount of half bricks or whatever, or bricks, early birds. But a lot of creators will also do, okay, we got early birds for 24 hours, during the first 24 hours. And that's what I like, that's what I want to see more of. Because it's not fair that people who show up, you know, in the first 20 minutes or hour or whatever, are the only ones to get early birds. Everyone wants to get an opportunity from the first day to get an early bird. Nobody should get any kind of special treatment on that. Let everyone who's there on the first day get an early bird if they can, if they want. And I, again, the, the two deck ones, there wasn't a whole lot of early birds. I ended up going with an early bird for a single deck, and then I added on the second deck. It's cheaper than buying both of them uh, at the $31 price point here. I like the decks. Hopefully, there won't be any delays. Fingers crossed. And uh, it's supposed to be here by April. We'll see. Yeah, for 14 bucks for one deck on the early bird. 27 for two. Five dollars savings on the doubles. Still saved a little bit of money just getting the one, but those are all sold out. Anyway, moving on, uh, we have the Rulers of Korea, which looks pretty nice. Interesting bat design. Got like an angry face and a calm face on the bat design. Interesting one-way court cards. Colorful tuck case and bat design. Very interesting bat design. I'm liking it. I don't know why some of the indexes are on the opposite corner. That doesn't help at all with usability. They did have early birds. All sold out. 19 bucks Canadian for one deck. Apparently it's a pretty low roll. I disagree. It's $12,000 Canadian. That's not a low roll. Uh, that's a pretty high goal. Uh, it's a reasonable goal. Okay, it seems like this card with the Index on the opposite side could just be a gas card, perhaps. I don't know. Come on, why did you freeze on me, you son of a? There we go. <laughs> Come on, there we go. Ooh. What the hell? Come on, you stupid computer. There's the creator. She seems to be, as some people have said, passionate about this. Project, so that's good. Very nice artwork. I do wish for the best. I don't know anything about these figures, but it's definitely something that I would look at getting on, getting later on. Nice number cards. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I believe it's being printed by Cardamunde, if I recall correctly, from what I've heard, seen. Yeah, there you go. Moving on, we got a new one here from Aristo. They previously created a steampunk deck. This is the V Twid poker deck. I have still kind of a motorcycle theme to it. Looks pretty nice. Nice artwork on the court cards. It's almost funded. Uh, it's getting there, a couple of thousand away. Currently, just over 5,000 out of a $7,000 goal. So, literally, they need $2,000 more. Uh, you can see, here's the exacts, they're a little bit, some people are saying they're kind of repetitive, yeah, they are similar, but they do have different figures. The problem is, 19 bucks for one freaking deck, are you insane? That is a ridiculously high price, uh, it's no more than a $12 deck, in my opinion. Um, you know, it's nice looking, I do like the rest of Steampunk decks. This isn't bad. I do think it's too expensive. And that might cost them. It might cost them. But so far they're doing pretty good with funding. Nice interesting pips for the aces. Pretty interesting artwork. Uh, skulls again for the Jokers. Well, maybe not again, but in this case. Here's your back design. It's an engine, apparently. Yeah, I would say so. Motorcycle type engine. Kind of an interesting spin on the Bicycle, right? they, just, they should have called it something like a bicycle, like the bicycle V20, because it's an interesting spin on bicycle with a motorcycle, if you will. Because 
traditional bicycle decks that have bicycle elements on them. Yeah, it's interesting. Ooh, that's a nice coin. A number of collector sets. Yeah, pretty cool. There's uh, more coins apparently. 23 bucks for a coin. And you know, collectors will only get all four, so that's expensive. And they also have keychains, which is interesting, but not that interesting. At 33 bucks for a keychain, I don't think so. It's a nice looking keychain, but too expensive. But interesting add ons, it's pretty unique, especially the keychain and whatnot. Also got some uh, other ones that are locked. 83 bucks for a set of coins. Anyways, moving on. One more on Kickstarter to talk about. It is the Oxygen Deck. Let's just take a nice little deep breath in there. It's well funded. It's inspired by the periodic table elements. Going to buy the HPC. It's from the Elemental Playing Cards. They've done another deck before the Hydrogen Deck. That's going to be a lot of decks if they produce every one on the periodic table. How many is that? I don't even recall. It's been too long since I've been in school. But there is a lot of elements on the periodic table. A lot. I'm not going to buy all those decks. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it makes me not want to buy any because then I'd want to buy all of them. Printed by USB-C, premium B card stock, universal cut, all that good stuff. Anywhere from 1,000 to 2,500 decks. Pretty nice back design. Bit too much writing, but it's pretty nice. It will be metallic inks. Just breathe. <laughs> uh, court guards. They're on oxygen, apparently. <laughs> Getting high, possibly. Uh, nicely recolored with the blue color and some yellow and black. Pretty nice recoloring. Interesting theme. Little reveal on the Queen of Spades there I see. Oh, look at that. Elements on her neck. Pretty cool. Pretty nicely designed. Making me, you know, second. There's the hydrogen one. Making me second guess whether or not I want to get it. And I kind of like that H2O. Two H's and an O. <laughs> uh, why not? Pretty cool thought. Moving on, there's some other stuff to talk about outside of Kickstarter. First of all, is this one on eBay. So far, I've seen it on eBay. The Bicycle Hypnosis deck. Available here from Pokestart 52. Also, if you're in Europe or Asia, Sop for Top, Gift Sop, I've also ordered from them. They're a reliable seller. And they're from Europe, so probably European friendly. In fact, it's free shipping, I believe, worldwide, as you can see. Cards have a one way back design. It's hypnotic. And the court cards, recolored, they've been jumbo sized. No suit indicators, which is fine, there's no room. And circle elements and recoloring. Interesting ace of spades, recolored chokers, fairly straightforward, the tuckers and everything. But it's pretty nice. On top of that, there's a new Fiona deck out there, Fiona 2nd Edition, V2. It's in blue this time, instead of green. Uh, probably fairly similar on the faces. It's all by, about this hippopotamus, the hippo that is in the Cincinnati Zoo. And you can get it on their website, Cincinnati SopCincinnatiZoo.com $6.99, not a bad price. However, they wanted $35 to ship the deck to Canada. No, thank you. I think I'll wait. <laughs> Either Murphy's or USBC will sell these at some point in time, I'm sure. I'll get it then. Thank you very much. And then, speaking of the USBC, they got a couple of things to talk about. First of all, a new bicycle rider back deck in black and gold. Um, 
It's got gold metallic inks on the backs, 10,000 produced, very limited. <laughs> uh, gold and black foil and embossing on the premium top case, which also has uh, a linen embossing. I don't know if you can see these pictures here. I do note, I don't like, at least from what I've seen, that the gold on the back of the cards is a different color that you see on the top case. I'm a little bit disappointed with that. As you can see, standard recolored cord cards, as you would expect. Nice foiling, and you can see the lever embossing. Very nice premium top case, at the very least. And a decent price, 7 bucks each, $6.99. I'll take it. <laughs> um, moving on, they also have this, which I didn't get, it's a little bit more pricey. It's an art print for the 1885 deck, which I reviewed the other day. Beautiful deck of cards. Very nice looking art print, if you're interested. It is there. Probably fairly limited. 18 by 24 inches. So about two feet wide and a foot and a half high. Metallic inks. Etc. etc. And it's signed by the artist James Gother, who designed the deck as well. And then Art of Play has finally released a Lady Moon deck. 18 bucks for this deck. Art of Play, why are you charging so much for your freaking decks of cards? It's getting ridiculous. You think we're made of money, us collectors. <laughs> we're not. And it's getting ridiculous. 18 bucks for what should be 12 or 13 bucks at most. It's a nice looking. You know, deck of cards, nice tuck case, embossing and foil from the looks of it. Interesting back design. Uh, and you see the ace. Very interesting court card, interesting, you know, design and thought behind it. And I like the cards they use for the hearts and diamonds. Uh oh, nudity. This is not a child friendly video, by the way. Designed by Kelly Ford. I like it. Price point, I don't like. They get ridiculous with the prices. Fortunately, I did get this in their black box on Black Friday. It was like 60 bucks or even less, I think. Um, because it was on sale, apparently. Or there was a discount that day. And so it was, I mean, it works out to like 10 bucks each deck or less. Not bad thing in shipping. So it's much cheaper than this, fortunately. Speaking of ridiculously priced, we also have the Ace Fulton's Vintage Back Deck. Not so how I feel about that back design. It's definitely different from the previous ones. So this is what they're going to do with the next deck. They're going to come out with eight colors in this version now, apparently. I assume. <laughs> um, apparently this was actually the original design. For the Ace Fulton's Casino decks. They never printed it, and now they decided after 7 years and 11 editions, 11 editions, this is 12, I guess, to finally release what they're calling the Vintage Backs, which was their original idea. It's apparently extremely limited quantities. Unless you tell me what that quantity is, I don't know how limited it is, or nor, nor can I call it limited necessarily. Super Rare Edition has drawn metallic backs. Custom Ace of Spades. It's printed by USB-C. And a nice tuck case and everything. Only available for 13 hours today. So by the time I get this video up on Sunday, two days from now, it's going to be gone. Which brings me to another point of contention. And that is that when I bought the black box, and other people as well, kind of thought that that, and it's a nice looking tuck case as you can see on the cards. Which makes the cards actually a little bit disappointing looking for me. Um, when I got the black box, I thought, you know, this is going to be a type of deck that you would only be able to get, you know, under special circumstances. And then all of a sudden, they make it available to anyone who wants. So, disappointed a little bit to say the least. Going to PlainCardDecks.com, I got a couple new things to talk about. First of all, I got Pop and Jay. Pop and Jay playing cards. I'm not going to get this one. not really digging it. But it's got a bit of a transformational look to it on the face. You can see seven of hearts is 
designed for the flowers of a bird in there for the snack the bat design one way Bordeaux essence says Poppins A I don't know who or what Poppins A is to be honest could be some kind of a brand from a fashion store I'm not sure interesting artwork though but I think I've had my fix of Transformation Decks for this year. It's kind of been a thing for this year. Transformation Decks all over the place. Huh. Van Gogh the Dog. I'm trying to think of how I could rename him Van Dog. I don't know. <laughs> it's a Van Dog. It's designed by John Little Boy. Oh, Little Boy. Okay. That's funny. <laughs> this was part of their Pit Box Club selection, which you can join. You get interesting new decks like this every month. And uh put it by USB C semi transformation apparently. And yeah. Also new at playing card decks is this Marvel Avengers Endgame deck by JL uh card company, JL Magic from they're from Asia, from China. Believe. Uh, printed by US. Uh, no, it's, it's printed in Taiwan. I was going to say printed by USBC. No, printed in Taiwan. I assume by Taiwan Point Card Company. Interesting artwork on the top case. Interesting colors. Don't hate me, but I have not seen Endgame. I don't even know colors. I've seen the last couple of Avengers movies. It's not really been my thing. I'm more of a DC guy. <laughs> um, don't hate me. I love the Euroverse. Uh, nice number cards. Completely custom deck. You can see the heroes, the figures on uh, big court cards. I couldn't name them all for you, unfortunately. Interesting aces. Although they hardly look like aces, especially the one here on the, uh, the left. Oh, it's the ace of spades, I see. It's hard to tell what it is. This one at least looks like a diamond. That one, obviously, it's a club. It's got Fight Club on it. And yeah, I don't know. I like that. It's an interesting borderless bat design. Great for cardistry. It is a one way. But yeah, it's going to be good for cardistry, obviously. Interesting red borders on the faces as well. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. I am going to get that one. Also, I'm getting these. I've been waiting for these. I saw somebody added the blue one to Portfolio 52 a few weeks ago. Um, not sure why they didn't add the other one, the pizza this in. But it is the number 47 circus playing card that they've been waiting on. Two different backs. Let me zoom in there. One is a one-way back. No, actually, they're both mirror image, apparently. Or, uh... Now, I know one of them is supposed to be one way, and one of them is mirror image. The blue one appears to be mirror image, I believe. And I believe it's the peach one. Yes, the peach one is a one way. They got like different elements on the backs and everything. You can see the number cards, and the rest of the cards have a nice bit of border detail. These are reproductions of vintage decks. The fourth or fifth ones now that playing card decks has done, which I like. Still not a big fan of the upside down opening top case, but it is what it is. So it's blue and peach. Apparently the one that just has a plain ace of spades, the other one has nice ace of spades, or or it's just like a gaff card. Duplicate. Nice jokers. Hmm. Yeah, this one's Definitely mirror image. And the other one's not. Uh, interesting. Circus themed court cards. The kings are ringleaders. The queens are apparently lion tamers or something. Probably not lion tamers, but <laughs> they had it's going back to the 1800s. I don't think they had lions in the circuses back there, but some kind of animal related act. This has got a whip. And then clown for the jacks. You can see all the suits here. Very nice. Here's a reproduction of some vintage jacks. You also get uncut seats. 
I do like it. And finally, the Murphy's Magic. Uh, I see they got a couple new decks here from TCC, which are, I believe, Natalia Silver Designs, the Christmas that you might love. I assume they are. We got the Oblique from Card Cuts. I think I might have shown you the Paisley one before. I got some of these on the way, some of them like the Arcadia, Arcadia, I'm waiting on to get in stock. And they also got the old Ironside from Queen's Wild, which I will be getting. Nice, classic looking back design. Then there's the Oblique, which I'm not planning on getting from Card Cuts, designed by Adrian Valenzuela. Made by USBC and Quest Stuff. Limited edition of 2,862. Because let's be random about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, not really digging it. It's obviously Card Street esque, with that back design. I'm not really digging it that much. And, and then and there's the Paisley. Christmas deck in green, but that's called House Company. I got the other Paisley decks, you know I'm going to get this one as well. Still got to review some of them, I believe. Pretty nice. A little bit pricey, though. Um, but yeah, so that is it for this week. For now, I will follow up on Sunday before I get this up, if anything else pops up. Uh, see you next time with more.